y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to talk about resawing. And what is resawing? But basically, resawing is taking a board that is an X number thick and making it thinner. Um, if you are ripping something, you are going through the thickness of the board. If you are resawing, you're going with the thickness of the board. Um, and if you're cross-cutting, you're going across the board itself. But uh, resawing in a powered shop is usually done on a bandsaw or on a table saw and then flip the stock over and do the rest of the way on the table saw. But with hand tools, um, it's a little more simple than that. You take a rip saw and you cut the board. So I want to show you two different methods of doing it. Number one, I'm going to be showing uh, how you would cut it with a rip saw and uh, just basically making a mark on the board and following it and resawing it. And then number two is a method that has become a little bit more popular and that is using a kerfing saw and then a Rubeau style frame saw. And uh, this is much faster um, and can be a little bit cleaner even. So let's take a look at these two methods and uh, see which one you might like. So let's start off by marking all the way around the board with a marking gauge. Some people like to actually make two marks, one for either side of the saw plate and uh, go between the two lines. I find it just easier to make one mark and then stay to the one side of it, just keeping in mind which side I'm staying on. And then I will keep the saw a hair away from the line and then plane back to it. Um, I personally just find that the easiest way to go about uh, marking and cutting. When it actually comes to cutting, I will start on the side of the board farthest away from me and slowly bring the cut back to my end of the board, always keeping sure that the saw is uh, where it needs to be on the right side of the mark. And I will do this until I get the saw plate all the way um, back to my side, so I have a, a kerf running all the way across. And I want that kerf on the top to be about a quarter inch or so. It's not entirely important that it have a specific depth. I just like to make sure that the top cut is uh, done um, correctly and to the line. Once I get that top kerf in, I will actually then lower my hand so that I am cutting uh, along the line on my side of the board. So now the only thing I have to look at is my side of the board. I only have to keep my eyes on that line. I don't have to worry about the line on the other side because there's a bit of a kerf for the saw blade to ride in. And as long as that kerf um, is holding most of the plate, it is not going to veer off on the other side. Once I've gone down a little ways, I'm going to rotate the board and uh, then basically do the exact same thing, only cutting on now the side that is closest to me, what used to be the side farthest away from me. And this way, I'm only looking at the one line. And as I go in a little farther, the kerf that I created on the other side will now capture the plate, keeping it in line. So it's a fairly simple process and uh, it goes pretty quickly. Um, well, as quick as a handsaw can, which really isn't that fast. But with a little bit of effort, you can go all the way through it and uh, have a, two boards where there used to be one. Now for the second method, I'm going to use a kerfing plane, which actually makes that kerf ahead of time. And I will do this down about three quarter inch on either side. and. Uh, this is basically a saw that is held in a plane body with a movable fence so that I can put it in a specific distance from the end. Um, I have a video on making this, so if you're interested in that, uh, you can uh, click on the link. I make that kerf all the way around, um, but on the ends I don't make it uh, quite as deep. It's just a, a, a niche for the saw to start in, so I'm not really uh, as worried about the ends as I am the two sides. Now I grab my Rubo style frame saw and tension it up and make it extremely tight. I actually want the top and bottom bars to bend slightly under the force of its tensioning. And I'll set it in that small groove and uh, cut away. And basically, if those kerfs are large enough, they will hold the plate fairly well so that it doesn't skew off to one side or the other and you can just focus on sawing. Um, you can jump the kerfs, it is not a foolproof, but uh, it holds it mostly. I'm also experimenting with uh, the difference between push and pull, so sometimes I'll flip the saw around in another way. I haven't found which way I really prefer it, um, but I think I prefer push, so something to think about. 
And basically, you just keep going um, and let it ride until you uh, go all the way down. And uh, when it suddenly pops, it is a, a happy, uh, surprising moment. So to give you a little idea about what I'm actually cutting, uh, this is white oak. It is um, about 7 eighths by 4 inches. And I basically cut it down into about a quarter inch um, and a little more than a half inch. And I'm going to be turning these into a chisel rack for an upcoming video here. Um, but the first method was just using the rip saw. And this takes a little bit longer. It probably took me about 8 to 10 minutes to actually cut this one board. Uh, they are... Um, one foot seven inches long and uh, so that's that's kind of slow and kind of time-consuming But uh, it leaves you with a fairly nice surface a few strokes with the uh, the planer and uh, You'll get that looking pretty nice the next method is using a, a Kerfing plane or a kerfing saw and making a, a mark with that all the way around and that kerf is then what the frame saw can ride in and uh, give you a little bit cleaner cut. Um, your frame saw with one person has a tendency to kind of vary and, and scoop off and so if you're not careful it can uh, go wildly. Whereas with a kerf it makes it a little bit easier and uh, simpler to do. But then you need two specialty tools that are generally just used for resawing. Um, but I'm in end up with a uh, with a much cleaner surface, and um, this won't take much time at all. I could probably do you know two or three passes with the plane and uh, get this up beautiful. Um, the time on the frame saw and the kerfing plane was probably about six minutes total, uh, probably about a minute and a half or so making a kerf, and the rest of it with the frame saw. So it is a faster system even with the uh, the kerfing saw. Um, and once you get um, used to it, you can go probably a little bit faster than that even. Um, and I've done on this one boards up to uh, 14 inches wide. Um, it's slow at 14 inches wide, but it still does it. Whereas this, with 14 inches wide, I mean, the, the board just doesn't quite fit. Now, I have to say, I am using an 8 points per inch um, handsaw for the resawing, and sometimes I'll go with like a 5 or a 4, um, but I'm trying to make something a little bit smoother to see if I could get that. So if you're using like a 4 or 5 point saw, you might actually be able to beat the kerfing plane and the uh, Rubo frame saw, but uh, you may end up uh, ending with a little bit worse work. Um, it all depends on how good you are with the saw. And really a lot of this, this whole thing comes down to your skill and how much you've done it. The more you do it, the more you learn about it, the easier this whole thing becomes. So that's about it for today. Um, I hope you like this. Please let me know in the comments below what questions you have. I would love to answer anything you have there. If you did like the, uh, the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are phenomenal and a huge encouragement to me, so thank you for that. If you like the video, check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.